Hey boys and girls, I'm going to show you how to use um, Tinkercad, just like a simple way to go to it. Um, so when you're logged in, you'll have your name here, and then Tinkercad kind of gives you some funny uh, nicknames for your projects. You can always change those. So if you just click on it, it's not going to let you edit. You have to actually click on Tinker This, or you go back and you hover, and it'll give you the option Tinker This. So I have a blank uh, work plane right here. I'm going to click on that. So this is your work plane. What I, I'm on my Mac, so what I'm doing is I'm holding my control button and pressing um, the left key and you know being able to swivel and see my workspace. Anything below the z-axis um, is underneath and everything above you're building upward. You can also click on um, the different views over here. And you can drag and swivel it as well. So we'll look at it from our original perspective. So we hit the home, it'll change wherever you went. So if you got a little crazy, didn't know where you were, hit home, it'll back it up like so. Then you can always hit the plus sign to zoom in. Minus will zoom you out. This gives you an above view, but that might mess us up a little bit because we are working three-dimensionally and not um, two-dimensionally flat. So let's go home. Mm -hmm. All right, so a few things to know. You have your basic shapes. If you want to get crazy and check out the other things, you can, but for now, we're just going to look at the basic shapes. Things that are grayed out are your holes. You can also make other things into a hole as well. So first I'm going to start with a box. I'm going to place a box down. And you'll see that it is sitting right on the work plane. You don't want to go below um, with a solid object because when the 3D printer prints, it can't print below this space. Uh, cylinder, just click and drop and drag it here. So I'm going to zoom in. If you want to make something taller, you click on the white squares. See these white squares? So if I want to make it taller, I want to drag it higher. I go up and down or smaller and make it flatter. If you want to actually lift something, do you see this black triangle? That's going to lift it on your Z axis. So now it's floating and you'll see a shadow underneath. So that when you do that, you want you do that for things when you're trying to stack stuff. Put one thing on top of the other. But I see there's actually a space. So what I could do, I could either now lower, so I want to hover my box over my cylinder, click on it, and now I go to that triangle and I lower it, bring it down. So now one thing is on top. But the viewpoints sometimes get crazy, so you want to make sure one thing is on top of another. So now I know these objects are together. You can also use your arrow keys to move your uh, shapes around. So I have one thing stacked on top of the other. I'm not really trying to make anything right now. I'm just showing you guys um, these basic steps. Now, if I click on something, you're only clicking on one thing at a time. You can also use the side shapes to make them wider if you'd like. So if I wanted to make it a big circle, there you go, with this little shape inside. Um, the black will do the same. So I'm just pulling um, it the sides where the white are the corners and the black is the side left to right where the white is kind of like right and bottom for me. Um, if I'm clicking that one. So it's whether you just want to control left, uh, sorry, left, right, front, or back, or your corners. So that's simple, but then remember, you can go up and down. So be careful, because if you want to go up and down, this one floating up here is your is to um, lift it higher or lower. So I'm going to have these touch. If you want to group them, you come up here. So you see how if you hover it says group or control G, you click on that, and now they're one image. Don't really worry about the color because the 3D printer can only print um, whatever the filament is. And the filament is simply um, the plastic 
that feeds through and melts down to build the shape. But the color can help you know, all right, they're the same color, this is one object. You can also do things like create holes and um, mold your shapes differently. So if I want um, to make the box a hole, I will ungroup. So now they're back to different colors, so I know they're separate. And I just simply change it to a hole. So it doesn't look like much yet. I'm going to bring it down so you can kind of see it's going into, into my orange circle. And then what I'll do is I'll select both again, and now I'm going to group them again. And now it made a hole. So the hole doesn't go all the way through. It stops at the bottom somewhere. If you want it to make a hole all the way through it, ungroup, go back. Again, I'm holding my control and clicking on the work plane, but now I need to drag it lower. Oops, sorry. Drag it lower. Make it bigger, and then I'm using my arrow keys. I'm gonna have to bring it lower. Bring it down. So you gotta use, bring it down from the sky using that triangle tool. And if you look down here, um, if it's a hole, it's okay if it goes past the work plane, because when it when you group it, it will um, just become a hole and won't matter. You can't have solid objects past the work plane. So if I want to make it wider, I can. Um, you can change the size over here, but we're just kind of messing around um, to fix, to just uh, play around with the shape. So I'm just pulling it to get a different shape or make it a little wider. I'm going to rotate to see. All right. So now if you want the hole to go all the way through, um, select everything and hit group again. And now you see the workspace. So now we cut out a hole from that shape. And I can move the shape around without worrying about um, selecting everything because it is grouped. So you can keep doing that. <clears throat> so if you want it to make maybe a tunnel going through, so I selected the cylinder hole. That's um, It's black and white, so you know with the stripes, you know it's the hole. You can also make any of these other shapes a hole as well. You just have to simply select it. But they just give you the box and the cylinder for basic shapes. So if I want the cylinder to go through the object horizontally, I wanted to click on it. And if you see these arrows that curve, we can rotate it down. So I'm just rotating. If you hold the shift, you get a more um, like a 15 degrees. Every 15 degrees, you can hold it. That way it gets a little more precise and it isn't on the wrong spot. So I'm just going to make that. I want to put it here. And if you low, I'm going to make it a little smaller. So I just kind of want a little little guy. If you hold down the shift, it will snap um, into more. So you, <clears throat> if you're trying to make like a perfect uh, shape size. But I'm just trying to get here. And if I want the hole to go all the way through, I can pull it all the way. And that's okay if it goes way past because it's just kind of like cutting it out. So there it is. <clears throat> but again, you have to select both objects again and group them. And now it cut out a hole there. So the hole goes all the way through and you can see. <clears throat> Keep trying to stack objects. Remember, you have to hit the triangle and that raises it to the sky. You can also cut off parts using the shapes. So if I want it to cut off like the edge of here, I should probably use a different shape, but just with what I have. So I go down, if I want to cut out a little shape, I can angle it so I can rotate it a little bit. And then again, group, and it cut out that little V, that little chunk that was touching it. So you can kind of, um, so you can you gotta view these as cutting like little pieces. Um, it can be just the corner, it can be a big piece, a little piece, you can add pieces, you can switch this to a solid. 
and you can combine shapes together if you want to start building out. Make it lower. Maybe I want to tunnel this way. I'm holding shift or you can make a box around and then group them together. And now I'm building out a shape here. Again, not trying to be anything, just getting the idea. If you ever want to ungroup something, you click, but it kind of goes in the order you grouped it. So it ungrouped that, then you click this, ungroup again, and you have to keep ungrouping. So it will go in the order of your grouping. But I could do that, select them all again, and group them as one. Again, the color doesn't matter. It's just to help keep yourself um, aware of what's going on. Oh, but notice, since I grouped them in a different order now, we have this little piece over here. This little chunk is there. Because this roof shape, this prism shape, is now cutting into the box. So order of the grouping does matter, and also um, what where you put what will matter as well. So I'd like you guys to just kind of try it, uh, play around with the different options. If you want to make a sphere, put it here. If you want to turn it into a hole, but remember to group. And now you have this crazy looking cutout. There are scribbles, cones, text. You can also cut out with text, polygons. Like you can get really crazy in here. Um, just play around, have fun, um, try different things. I look forward to seeing the things you make. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any uh, basic questions. Um, but I want you guys to just get comfortable uh, with using the different tools, the grouping, the ungrouping, and the holes and the solids. So thank you guys so much for listening. Good luck and have a great time.